<laughs> How you guys doing? I'm Cindy Cody, your art here for today. I'm suddenly live for day three of the 12 days live. I'm going to be showing you how to paint this adorable snowman on acrylic on canvas. Every step, every component of the way I'm going to be explaining. On the mic today is my husband, John. Hi, guys. John tracks uh, me with one of our three, four cameras. And what he basically does is make sure that you at home can see everything I'm doing. So if you're trying to paint this for yourself, you can succeed at that project. I'm kind of excited about today. Yeah. I'm going to sip my coffee and and I thought I had like uh, about 30 more seconds before we were going to be <laughs> <laughs> putting out paint, just messing around. Okay. I, I leaned over on the wrong button. <laughs> I didn't even know that was an option. So this I, is going to be an interesting intro and replay. Anyways. <laughs> well, I got to, luckily I got to see it on the delay. It was actually, you looked really cute. You were like, oh, hey, look, we're live. <laughs> so I'm going to put out my canvas. There we go. This is a 9 by 12 canvas. On this canvas, I have some wishes. Um, so the first wish, this came in. Linda started, kicked this off for me in group. And basically, I just want to wish an end to all of the violence, the random acts of violence that are happening. And have every single person just be safe, safe in their shopping, safe in their homes, safe in their concerts, just safe. That's something I'd like to see us all freed from. Um, I have a wish for Barbara who was actually painting the polar bears with us and then um, ended up having to go to the hospital to just find out what's happening and to have good healers around her and a really good treatment option and a good outcome. And then, and my final wish is that Sure Pets, that's you guys. Find each other wherever you're at. You're out shopping at, a, you know, uh, the art store, wherever you're at. That you guys meet each other up and you make uh, lifelong friendships around art. Those are my wishes. That I'm going to paint over on my canvas <laughs> as I sip my coffee. Um, you know, I we have lots of wishes that come in, uh, come in here into the chat. And I want to just say thank you to all of our light keepers who capture those li those wishes and put them on their own canvases so that those uh, those wishes get carried forth into the universe. We really appreciate that. We really do. It's the positivity that makes a difference in the world, I think, in general. Yep. And then art, too. I really like art. Are we ready to paint this? Uh, yes. There are there are, there are over 300 people here already ready to paint this. They're just, they just keep coming in the room. They're ready, man. I'm ready, too. I'm yeah. ready for any. So this painting, I actually start with a solid color background of kind of a light blue. Mm -hmm. And that way as I'm doing all these techniques, the blue is underneath just making sure that my uh, painting looks more finished and more resolved at the end and I can be happier with the result. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to grab a brush. It can be, um, you know, a big wide brush. It could be just a nice bright. I've got a number 10 bright here called Goldilocks Synthetic Filaments. Right, so it's nice and firm. Is it going to hold too much water? I'm going to dip her in the water and I'm going to take just a little of my white and blue and mix together this nice kind of medium blue color you see here. And I'm going to paint my whole canvas covered with this blue. You know what I'm doing? There we go, yeah. We don't have to worry about the direction our brush is traveling for this background. On this one, it's not really going to matter. I'm probably out of habit going to smooth it out, but it's not super important. We don't have to worry if some of it's a little darker or a little lighter. It could be sky blue or maybe a little closer to right before storm blue. Just all of it needs to be blue. Pulling some out. I'm loading my brush. I pull, 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 and I flip and I pull, pull. Grab some white. Same sort of thing. That's how I'm loading. And that's how I get a lot of paint on my brush. See, I just run through and I keep pulling it through both sides and it loads up my brush. You can kind of hear everything. So I'm using a number 10 instead of one of my big brushes today because... And this is super important for any of you painting along, not just in my tutorials, but in acrylic tutorials just in general. Um, you know, these brushes are just tools. The tools just make marks. And none of the techniques that you learn in acrylic painting generally require a specific brush to do a particular stroke to get the result. The tools have properties and you can find those properties across a lot of different kinds of brushes so no i don't have a big wide brush but i can still make a nice background 
You know, don't feel like you have to have the exact same brush that I have all the time. You don't necessarily have to. You can still get a good result with a different brush. Isn't that right, John? Absolutely. I like my tools, and I'll always tell you what I'm using. I won't hide it from you. I'm going to flip this so I have an easier time covering it up. Oh. But if you didn't have a big number 30 wide, you could still paint this background just fine with whatever number 10 bright you had. But if you had a big wide brush, you could be already done with this. <laughs> and that's the only reason why you'd switch to a larger brush, is just to be finished faster. What you see me doing here is just making sure that all of my white canvas is covered with this blue. Sometimes canvases will fight back. <laughs> they resist the paint. That's a lot about their, their um, process, how the canvases are made. Most of these canvases have gesso already on them, so they're just ready to go. All right, I think I'm in there. I think I have a nice little background of blue. Yeah. Do you have a nice little background of blue? Yeah. I, I, you, know, you do? <laughs> uh, well, uh, I mean, I do because you're painting one for me. <laughs> so by virtue of the empirical we, I have one. <laughs> so I'm going to put an example canvas over here. Okay. For a second. And I'm going to demo what we're going to be doing next in our brush stroke so that you guys have a really good idea of how I'm going to accomplish that. And I'm going to show, show it to you so no matter what you're doing at home, you can get this um, created. So I'm going to grab, oh, let's see, just a, just a bright. I'm going to grab this bristle bright. So this is a number 10, right? It's about this wide, about one inch wide long handled Cambridge brush. And I'm going to take a little of my phthalo blue and some of my quinacridone and some white. And I'm going to make a dry brush stroke across my canvas. And I'm gonna show you this with just a couple different tools so you understand how you're doing it. So my pressure is soft and light. My paint is loosely mixed on the brush. And I'm going to be stroking like this. See how dry this is? Yeah. You know, maybe on this one, I'm going to get a little more white on there and some pink. You can even grab some diox here. Mm. And I'm coming back again. If I were to press real hard... Right? I might not get it if I blended it. I'm going to get this, right? So it's about getting a streak, grabbing some just white across, and following what I did before. Now, I'm going to grab a cat's tongue. I'm going to get, it's dry, I haven't put it in water, a little white on it, maybe a smidge of blue, purple. And quinacridone, these are all loosely mixed. And I'm going to go ahead and, again, dry brush. See, they're the same. You're okay. Right? And come and put in some windy sky right there. So the important thing is that your brush isn't wet. You're doing the dry brush. You're letting a lot of the canvas show through. And you're doing these windy strokes that have a curve. Now that we know what we're doing and we practiced, we can come put that in together. And I'll just use this bright. Now my first stroke, I'm going to chalk these out so you know where we're going. My first bunch of windy strokes that I'm going to do is I'm going to do one from about the midpoint on the canvas. My first stroke is going to come out, going to come up and off, and I'm going to be marrying this stroke with some wind that's going to be blowing down like this. And then I'm going to be building my sky from all of that. I know I've got a nice little hill here that my snowman's going to live on, and he's about, 
and tell you exactly he's going to be three inches up on the right hand side to about one inch one and a half inch on the left hand side of a little swoop so once you know that then you're going to be able to sit there and build your swirls as they're coming right into this so that's all we're trying to do is create this brush directionality. So let's get into it and paint this guy. It's going to be super fun. I'm going to sippy sippy up. Yeah. How are you guys doing? Good. Oh, they love your hair and the hat today. You've got Thank lots so of comments, much. especially how sparkly you are. You're very I feel very glittery, like the holiday is time to glitter it up. Yeah, and, and, and you're, you're, you have a very sparkly neck piece there. <laughs> Multi-layered. So this time I'm going to take my number 10 bright, which is the synthetic mix of bristles and filaments. But again, we could do this with anything. And I'm going to get some red on here. And I'm going to come and get a little white. So see how this brush is loaded? Loosely mixed, right? And I'm going to come here and drag across. My dry brush. I'm gonna get some more white. I'm gonna come right here, drag across. You can do this sky in a lot of colors. Let's get a little more quinacridone and uh, maybe a smidge of the phthalo and some more white. So you can see that mix there. Blowing the windy, windy day away. I'm up here and you can see I'm on the flat, my pressure's light and I'm just taking this swirl. I don't mind that canvas is showing through underneath because that's part of the cold day. Now I know I want this swirl to be a little accentuated with white so I'm gonna come and get some just white, right? Load it on my brush. I'm gonna make sure that I'm underneath here you can see I'm just blowing that white wind. That's the snow flurry happening right there. Maybe I'm going to give another little white flurry up top. Haven't rinsed my brush. I'm just going to make sure that I've got some nice white flurry here. Now we have the beginning of this beautiful windy sky. It's looking good. And I'm going to get into slightly darker colors through here and then just accentuate them with some white and up here. So let's start up here because that's our small space. I'm not going to rinse off my brush. I'm going to get some quinacridone, a little diox, quinacridone diox. Maybe a little more diox in the next stroke. You can get a smidge of white. Overall, I'm just making sure that this sky is dark er, at the top here. And then I have a nice mix of colors that are blowing off. If your brush gets too dry, you can always tip it off in the water and drag off the extra. Because you want a dry brush, but it can get too dry. I just grabbed dioxin, a little quinacridone again, and a smidge of white. And I'm going to come here and see how when I drag this lightly, it, it creates the snow flurry. I don't want to overblend though. Get a little quinacridone, a little diox. I'm just painting this in to be also a flurry. Right, let's see how that's looking. That's looking really good. Now I might come and get some blue this time. I haven't rinsed my brush. It can have a little bit of purple. And I'm going to come under this one. Look how cool and, 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 and cold that is. So it's the blue and my purple, and I'm brushing this up, letting it be streaky. You can get a little bit of white and a lot of blue. And don't forget you can come back. So if I've got a little white and a little blue here, So I can really enjoy shaping, grabbing some purple, maybe a little quin, 
right here. Really dark in this incoming bluster. So that looks cold and frozy and windy, doesn't it? Yeah. Super windy day. We're just doing really good. I might get a little purple and a little blue and a smidge of white. See, loosely, loosely mixed. I love this effect right here where it streaks. You can see how pretty these colors are together. And I'm going to make sure that coming off this corner, you know, I've got a nice little mix here. A little white and a little purple. And I'm dragging this back down. Isn't that nice? I'm coming back from the right hand side to the left now. The other place that I can pull color from purple, red, and white as I make sure that my windy swirls are super beautiful. Super fun. Now, right here, interestingly enough, I want this to be a very dark purple, and then it's going to get a little bit whiter as it comes up here. And this is a cool thing that we talk about in winter skies. So in summer skies and daylight skies, a lot of times it's darker at the top and lighter at the bottom. But sometimes in a winter sky, it'll be darkest right at the horizon. We'll be talking about that all week. And so we're going to, even though this is really decorative, I rinsed off my brush, so I was just fresh in my color. And I'm going to get some purple. And I'm going to make sure that just right here, along my hill line, and you can take it below where you think your hill is going to be a little bit. I'm going to brush my purple right here. And then I'm going to get a little purple and a little blue and a lot more white. And come right here. I'm going to brush this over. And I'm doing shorter brush strokes over here at first just to make sure that I have this particular value happening. A little more blue and white. Blue and white. See how we have that last section done? And I'm pressing a little firmer. Look at that. Now I want one more very bright flurry that's happening here. I've got to make sure all my white flurries are looking, they're out there. They look flurry-ish. So I'm rinsing off my brush and I'm getting some white. And I'm going to come across here very dry brushy and blow. See this lot, soft little wind? Oh, yeah. So I'm, I'm not pressing hard when I get that, right? You could do this with any brush. This is about the brush pressure and the width and size of your brush. And that it's stiff. There's lots of purple love happening out here, though. Is there? Yes. Just making sure I'm happy with my blustery elements. Generally speaking, there cannot be enough purple. There cannot be enough purple. <laughs> I agree. Now at this stage, I'm inclined to want to do my first layer of speckle snow. Speckle snow? And I'm going to say that this is optional. If you have a splattering tool like I have in my Galaxy set, this is a splattering tool that gives me a very consistent result that I'm familiar with. You may have another tool that you splatter with all the time. You may have another method. I have a video on how to splatter stars and speckle things. So there's definitely a way of doing it. Um, what I'm going to say about that, though, is, is definitely do this if it's fun for you, if you would enjoy it on the painting. Don't do it if you wouldn't enjoy it. Yeah. And also do it on a test piece of paper. And, and uh, you know, in addition, in, in addition to, like, just, you know, having a test piece of paper, it's good to warm up. Some of the people were saying in chat, you know, like, they, they do warm-up splatters. Yes! So that, like, you know, like, like their exercise is like, all right, now I got my fingers in gear, I'm predictable right. so with so you could paint. take your practice, right? Yeah, like that. Yeah. And splatter and see, is my brush too thick? Does it have the right dispersion? Do I like how it's splattering? So if it was having a bad splatter or maybe you need to lighten the load and you're like, oh, I'm there. And then you can take it over to your canvas. Yeah. 
And cool. on this, you don't get as much over over splatter because this, the bristles, the filaments on this are so stiff, so you can do small pulls and get small results. But again, you may be doing the two brush whack method. Mm, yes. <laughs> At which point, you know, that's everywhere. Fun, but everywhere. All right, here I go. So I'm pulling back softly. If I were to pull back hard, it would launch more of a string at my canvas. And so that's like the thing I've had to learn over time, like when I'm doing wave splatter, snow splatter, is how do I want to pull my splattering tool to get my snowflake? And the snowflakes will look the best over the dark. But I like this texture and I feel like it makes it wintry and fun. And also this is a good thing to just have in your kit in your life. Because there's so many reasons to splatter paint. They just go on and on and on. Even if you're fluid painting, this is a really good thing to have. Because splatters in your fluid painting, those are interesting. And then some of you just went, oh, I can splatter. You can also string gel. It's super fun. All right. <laughs> so I've got this. And I'm going to get my number 10 bright up again. And I'm going to paint in the basis of my hill. I'm going to have to move this it's kind of wet paint out of the way. Right. And so the, for the first part of my hill, I like to make what's under my snow um, darker than what's on top of it. And I'm going to mix a little of my blue to my purple. And I get this sort of dark color. It's a... Uh, it's really, I just really enjoy it. And it's going to help when I do the shadows and everything. So it's still blue. It's not purple. But the purple has deepened the blue and taken it out of that sort of aqua range it wants to go. So when we do the snow on top, right, of the snowman and he's aqua, that lets him pop out of the canvas. Like they like to. Yes. And one thing I'll say here is it does matter how you're brushing. So if you're painting along. Remember to brush in the direction of the hill. Because all the brush stroke directionality matters right now. I'm going to come back from the left side and brush this back in. And then I'm going to take a sippy sippy break answer any questions that we have but mostly just a sippy sippy break <laughs> <laughs> well it's good because uh uh michelle uh it, it could be michael okay um i'm michelle or michael could be a split spelling on one of those so uh i always do bread on meet so john the question was <laughs> <laughs> skipping to the point we have uh, a Ooh, community classic. member who would like to know can you paint this on wood yes no I've heard you talk about this place. You could paint on just about anything, huh? You can paint acrylic on any surface that will take acrylic paint. So wood's definitely one of those surfaces. Um, if you found some wood at a junkyard and it's reclaimed, you may want to take the extra step of putting what's called an isolation coat on. And that can be anything from GAC 100 to uh, Liquitex's uh, gloss medium and varnish. But what you want there is a non-porous kind of barrier that prevents whatever's in the wood coming up. If you're buying a wood panel from the art store, that is probably not as important. They probably have done some of that work for you. Just uh, the gesso is not an isolation coat, so stuff can come through the gesso and then come through your painting. Like weird chemicals can turn into a strange color. It's a thing you might not know. So paint on all the things, just where you're not sure what's going to seep through in your art and impact it. Just put an isolation coat, but paint on all the things. My mom used to paint on... Um, rusty cans that she found out in nature that people had thrown away oh yeah those are really cool i've seen those floating around those were they were like they were you know, like these old like uh uh they were gold mine the gold miners in colorado would like leave bottles and cans and things and so my mother when i was young used to collect those paint those and sell those to tourists and, but they are so cool like we still have one of these gorgeous ones. it's like an old discarded bean can right and, and to be sure, I don't think she put an isolation coat on and that thing is rusting and her painting is still fine. Yeah. So, you know, lifetime. But they look really cool. <laughs> they're really cool. You, yeah, they're really cool. So you can get away with a lot. Don't get too stressed in the painting thing because you can get away with a lot. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. I've seen saw blades that have been painted and they're like, you know, they're still hanging in there on the side of the barn. 
I love it. It's what acrylic paint is meant for. Are we ready to paint in the uh, snow? Yes. All right. So I'm going to make sure this is dry because I don't want it to pick up on my snow too much. Mm -hmm. I'm going to hit it with a hairdryer real quick. Okay. Real quick. And I'll say, uh, guys, don't forget to check out uh, all the information you need about this painting is in the links in the description below. You'll find uh, a link to our website where we'll have the traceable for this. You'll find the reference image. You'll find a list of all of the materials that you'll need. Plus a link to the other, uh, you know, the other twelve day of twelve days of Christmas live events that are going on. So the past ones you can watch, the future ones that uh, haven't happened yet, you can find those, uh, along with uh, all of the other projects and things that we've got going on there. So, here's the cinnamon. We're ready to put on some snow. Let's put a blanket of beautiful snow on the ground where the snowman can live. Yes. All right. So the snow's pretty simple. I'm gonna take just a smidge of this purple and blue and dust it on my brush now it's just a dust i'm even going to take the extra step of maybe offloading it a bit on my towel so the pigments in the bristles but it's not very saturated right so if you don't have a towel like this you can use a paper towel you just want to make sure that you just see the color but that you're not really like if you touched your finger see how light that is that's how little paints on the brush sure. So with that amount of small amount of paint on the brush, I'm going to pull up my white and I'm going to come here and start snowing down my mountain. And when I come to the bottom, I'm going to kind of stop my brush stroke. If I need to get a little more pigment. They just dusted on there. I will. All right. See how it's white, but it's an off white. That'll be important when we put on some bright white snow for our snowman. I'm just following my hill, kind of stopping at the valley. I'm going to come over at the other side, dust, dust, barely any pigment, get some white. And I'm going to come over here and again, stop kind of at the valley. You can bring these lines on the edge of your brush a little closer together. But mostly this is important. And I want to say if you're a little brush, this is a really cool technique. Even you big brushes out there, this is a really cool technique to kind of create shape and dimension in the snow. Now I'm going to get a little of my purple on my brush and some of my white. And I'm going to mix to a kind of medium little purple. I'm going to go back and forth right here. See, it's like a little curved stroke, a little smile. And some of those strokes will go up the hill a little bit. So you'll notice my underpainting, the dark hill, is showing through underneath. I've got this sort of off-white snow happening on my hill here and there. And I like it. I like to put my highlighted snow in after I get my snowman in so I can see what is showing around him and where I want his bright light and where I want his shadow. So real quick... I'm going to sip my coffee and give this a dry again. Oh, that looks so good. I'm going to sip my coffee yeah, and give this and actually, a dry again. Well, it looks even okay. better over here. See, look. Does it? Camera, oh, so nice. See, look at the, See, it catches all the purple. Like yeah, right now, it's an abstract snowscape. See, like this one, it doesn't catch as many as the beautiful purple hues, but this You're going to love the new studio's see? color. It's yeah. going to just explode your brain. It does. You, know, you will be just like, I didn't realize she painted with so many colors. She's even more awesome than no, I ever knew. No, no, real quick. You keep that. You keep glancing off camera. You keep your reference photo. The ref. The, well, I shouldn't say photo. The reference painting that you did of this just off camera, and, and that's yeah. That's what you're using. That's what you're glancing off over there. At. That's what I'm looking at. And that's the same one that we use picture in picture here. That's mm -hmm. how you got that picture in picture. Yeah, but I can't use your picture in picture because your picture in picture is behind me, and it would make my neck break. Makes so my picture-in-picture picture is either a print out of my painting or my actual painting off to the side. Unless I do one of those days where I, I made no plan and I just paint it out of my head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then there's nothing. <laughs> there's no anchors. I'm going to dry this okay. real quick. Yeah. So in our, uh, in our new studio, we're actually, we're going to hopefully have uh, some, a reference monitor for her that's much closer to her, uh, her easel. So it's easier for her to just sort of look over there and see what we've got going on, and uh, we, have, you know, we we have some other exciting things we're going to hopefully be able to do with some of that studio space. 
but one of the nice things is is that we're going to have uh, some cameras that are all matchy matchy. Uh, that means that they'll all see things the same way, so that the, the 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 camera images will match. Like if you guys look right now, you'll see that the purple is different. See how the, this camera sees a little bit more less purple than this camera sees it. So, real quick. Okay. Show them something. All right. So. Uh, the the whole reason that you know one of the big reasons we're doing the bag upgrades in the in this is to help match those can match those up and that was really made possible by you our community um, you know we had an Indiegogo uh, about a month ago and we were able to uh, totally re uh, make our target you you there yeah, uh, okay make sure your mic's on yeah okay yeah but uh, you know it was a big thank you to all you guys because you made this possible and uh, you know we're just now starting the redesign and the rebuild. And uh, you know, well, well, over the next couple of months, you guys will see a lot of a lot of saw, sawdust around here. But or thank you. We may hide it all from you and just surprise you. You don't know how we are. Never. You know. don't know. You well, don't know. It's it's it's. We got we got <laughs> we got we have work to do. You guys, there's gonna be. You guys are fine. This is the one thing I have to say. Just I know we're randomly not. Is that I don't always love on my canvas boards when the paint collects at the edges. Yeah. Not my favorite. And then I mostly brush stroke from left to right, which I didn't realize till I started using canvas boards. And I was like, man, I have a, I have a dominant brush directionality that collects all the paint on the left-hand side and makes a mess for my manicure. Ah. I'm going to show them how to draw on the snowman. All right, we're ready. So the first thing I want to show you is sharpening. Oh, man, this isn't the right one. I need the one with the big opening. Oh, hmm. It's on my desk. Okay, I'll get it. So I'm sharpening this so that I can have a slightly more defined point when I'm drawing him in. You don't have to sharpen your... This is just chalkboard chalk that you get at, like, the drugstore, the art store, anywhere. This is, like, the everywhere you shop chalk. And I can sharpen it with a pencil opening that's just slightly larger. But I got to get the slightly larger pencil opening than the number two pencil. So you need one of the sharpeners that have the bigger hole. And I'm just going to sharpen this in here. See how I've got a point now, like a crayon? That's really going to help me. <laughs> and you can just do that with any old chalk. Yeah. I have a bunch of broken pieces of kid chalk, and I periodically sharpen them and, and you know, get that done. And now, then the kids come and steal that sharpened piece of chalk because they're like, ooh, sharpened chalk. I want my total snowman to sort of end, maybe, like, I don't want him to be any higher than that. So I'm making a mark at about eight inches up just to remind myself not to go all the way up the canvas. This is my breaking point. And this things is a, have gotten weird and I need to do something. This is a 9 by 12, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. This is 9 by 12. So the first thing I'm going to do, and I'm, I'm, you, there is a traceable. Yes. On the website that you can use to transfer. But I know a lot of people want to know how to draw this guy, so I'm going to demo it. Okay. Because I got asked a lot of questions about that. So my first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come to the bottom of my hill. And I'm going to be, oh, about a half inch from the bottom of my hill up from the top. And I need some room at the back because he's got to cast a shadow. I'm going to make the bottom of my egg shape. And I'm going to measure this out so you guys know about how big I'm making him once I get him in. And I'm going to bring this egg shape up. And it's going to be exactly what I said. It's going to be kind of egg shaped. All right, so I've got this sort of egg shaped little belly. Right? And then on his egg shape, now here's an interesting thing I did. You, if you guys are learning how to draw, this is a thing you can do. Once I set my egg shape, I made a kind of curved line like this when I designed him. And that's going to help me set my snowball on his head so that it looks like he's looking up. Because otherwise I could make him go forward or back. So sometimes that curved line creates an anchor for me to be thinking about those things. Now we know he has a little scarf here, which I want to put in. That's just a little stripe around his neck right and his arm starts even above the little scarf a bit and it's just it just comes out it's a little doohickey like that I'm gonna come over to the left and make another mirror doohickey see how it just comes up can we see those shapes oh yeah yeah okay and so then his hat his hat is actually crazy simple because I don't do a bill I'm just gonna make an ellipse at the top of his head comes around it's just a, like at first you're like it's a halo and you're like but there's no brim you know what we don't need a brim we're not we're just we're gonna have a band <laughs> where the hat meets here is just where a band is so I actually come back down to his head 
and I'm going to come up with my hat, come back, and there we go. I've got him sketched in where I can paint him in. Yeah. And I can take off any chalk that I want with just a clean wet brush. So you just get clean water, and then you can just take any chalk off easily that you want to take off. Any like sketch marks, anything that you did where you were like, oh, I just don't know. You can clean up your drawing very easily with just a damp brush. Or if you have one of my clouds, man, that takes it right off. <laughs> huh. They're also good for chalk cleanup. So once I have him in and I'm happy with his shape, right, I'm going to take this time to put in his shadow. And I will probably grab a smaller brush. Let me grab a number four Cambridge, or you could have a number four satin or a number four black pearl or a number four archer, but it will be okay no matter what you pick. But it's a bright. But it's a bright. A number four is Jeff. Number four. Number bright. four bright. And that's because I'm looking for this size. A brush. So if I were to put this on centimeters, it is one centimeter wide. Right? And mm. it is a little over a quarter inch wide. You guys see that? Yeah. You get a sense of the size? That's the size I'm talking about. I'm going to load it up. And you can notice I, when I load up, I pull, 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 pull. So I pull out my brush and I flip over and I pull and flip over and pull and flip over. A lot of times I go pull, 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 three times flip, pull, pull, pull. This puts a lot of paint inside my brush. And I'm going to make a shadow that comes from underneath him and behind him over the hill. So I like to start my line right under his belly to about here. So it's, you know, right as it starts to go up and lift away from the hill, I don't want a shadow line there. And then what's fun is I can just curve it and come directly back. And the curve of his body can send me to where I want to go. So I've left a little bit of white here. To continue the hill, but you can see now he's got a shadow that goes off. Well, I've got this purple on this little brush too. Extra step here on snow. You guys can do this in crayons or anything that you're doing. I'm gonna come and add this extra little light shadow. Can you guys see that? Oh yeah. Yeah. That's going to make the seam even more like it came down and there's like a little valley or trail or something that's happening here. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to paint him in in my phthalo blue and a little white, but mostly it's about my phthalo blue. I'm going to grab a little white, not too much. Right about here. Not dissimilar to how I painted the... um background. And against these colors where the dioxin and quinacridone have mixed in, it makes this thalo blue jump out. And this feels like that kind of arctic cold like what we had with our polar bears yesterday. Mm -hmm. Little paint, little paint, little paint. And I'm putting, this is just like the hill, isn't it? I'm putting the dark color in to build my snow on. So my snowman is frozy cold. He said be frozy cold. Sorry. And I'm going to kind of pay somewhat attention to brush directionality here when I'm painting him in. And then I'm going to go around his belly and make sure that my lines kind of come long and curve down. And then when I come across him, I'm going to make sure that my brush strokes kind of go at this round. And then back on the other side, I do the long curve down. Yeah, it's kind of like implying a belly, mm -hmm. even though there's nothing there yet. Just making sure I got that. Little white, little blue. On the back side. And you can see where like there's white in it, what I'm doing a little bit better. My brush got too dry, so I'm adding some water to it. Because it wasn't covering the canvas the way I wanted it to. You want a dry brush when you want a dry brush and a regular brush when you want a regular brush. I'm going to get a little darker here so that I can tell my arm from my snowman body. And I'm going to do the same thing over here a bit. So it's, not, it's not pure blue, it's just darker. 
You see he's got his little happy, joyful arms up. Because he's a happy, joyful guy. Yep. So happy to be living where he belongs in the snow. Did you have any, were there suggestions on general purples for this? Could you use any purple? So, so here's the thing. Um, and I'm going to make a whole video about this. But basically, this is the thing. More than you have to worry about the exact purple you're using. Because some purples are warm and some purples are cool. And some purples are very light and some purples are dark. Is trying to get a purple that's a similar value. So if you were to look at it black and white against Diox purple, is it a similar value to Diox purple? Because the values are sometimes more important than the hues. Value is how light or dark something is. Hue is the exact color it is. You can be crazy with hue. Mm -hmm. Still get a great painting if your values are down. So if you're in a situation ever out there as an artist where you don't have a paint color that you need, and it has happened to me, the solution always is, is to nail your values and get as close as you can on your hues, but be much more concerned with values. Because if you do that, your painting will work out. And I mean, I have been places without all kinds of colors that I needed. Mm. Where I was like, I'm going to have to paint this in pink instead of blue. I guess it's a different painting. But I got my values right and ended up with a really good painting. So if you're picking a purple, you want to just make sure that it has the same value as Dox. Gotcha. It doesn't have to be the same hue. All right. So I'm still putting this in. That's very helpful. And, and, you, and you'll get a slightly different result, but that's okay as long as the result is good and you're happy with it. Right. It's okay to get a different result. Nobody minds that. And to give him like a nice little rounded head. He's very rounded. So I'm coming around on the edge of my brush. So I'm using the edge. I'm coming around the edge, just coloring this in. And then I'll fill that all in once I have that colored in, because I know I'm coming back with some snow. So I'm pretty happy with that. I might take a second. I have a little extra chalk here, so I've got my damp brush. I'm going to erase that. See, where the paint is dry, I can just erase the chalk. So I've got to worry about that at all. Now, while I'm here, I'm going to just go ahead and put in at least the band around his neck. So I'm going to get a little of my black, smidge, smidge, smidge. You could also do purple if you don't want to do black. And I'm going to deepen, so you could, you could do purple here too. You're just trying to darken the cad red. All right, so it doesn't really matter which one you use. You're just trying to darken it. And once you get it dark enough, you can go ahead and make sure that you take this across his little neck. We'll be putting the little blowaways on once he is all painted in. But this is just a step that you can do to save yourself some time later. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to do a cool thing where I kind of take my brush on the edge. And I make this sort of shape like it's rolled. See what I'm doing? Mm -hmm. Kind of did it with the bear's ears. But look, now I have a rolled <gasps> scarf. So oh, later when I put highlights. I see it. Yeah. <laughs> That's so cool. You just added a little bit of little divityness to it and it Yeah. You fooled our eyes. Fool the eye. And then when I put the highlights on, all of a sudden it'll be a wrinkled scarf. Uh -huh. Now at the top of his hat, I'm gonna come on the edge of my brush because his hat band is not particularly wide. And I'm gonna put my dark red value in first. You can see some of the chalk gets into my brush. That's okay. This chalk's pigment is so weak it doesn't impact me. If you were doing this with a good pastel it would be coloring your paint. I'm just putting that in while I got that. So I know where that is. And now I got the hats. And who doesn't like the hats? And I'm going to take this number eight short handled sterling bright. So this would not be the same as an eight in a long handle. See the difference? Oh, yeah. So that's something to know when you're buying brushes is that these numbers can change up. So you're looking for a brush that is right about a centimeter wide. But I'm doing a short handle and it's got a softer filament because I'm going to paint in the hat black. So I'm loading up my brush. I go pull, 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 flip, pull, pull, pull. Could you push that uh, canvas forward just a touch? Yep. Uh, there. Oh, perfect. So right there. See, pull, 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 flip, pull, pull, pull. Yeah. It would be very hard to load this brush up with heavy body paint because it's not as firm, mm -hmm. but it's really easy to load it up with fluid paint. 
And these make good detail brushes because they're economical and you can replace them when you need to and they have a nice edge. So I'm just going to pull, pull, pull. And come up here. Go across. Just nice to have it. Handles its little space pretty well. And you can't really get a right hat or a wrong hat. Sometimes you guys will be like, oh, I don't like my hat. You know, be playful with your hats. It's all okay. You can even flare it out a little bit. Whatever you want to do with it is fine. Just a little stovepipe hat. John knows a lot about hats. Probably knows exactly what kind of hat this is. Hmm. Well, uh, <laughs> you know, it, 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 it is a, a more modern hat design. Uh, the way that that the hat flares out at the top uh -huh. that's a it's a more modern uh component of those hats um you know they're typically uh you're, you're you're there were there were several variations on those hats they had you know there was w at one point the collapsible hat mm -hmm. and which was actually a thing because when you went to the theater you needed to be able to collapse the hat and stow it underneath your seat and they had little places for them to go um which is the kind of hats that typically uh these snowmen were famous for is because they would those hats would uh you know they'd get they'd get worn out they were just like you know you wear them out they get nicked up and bunched up and they'd end up as play things for kids well there you go and that's how those kinds of hats ended up being uh, so popular with snowmen i did not know that and you knew that i just sort of did know that i'm gonna kind of pull I knew my that. red across in more of a straight line here right here just to imply that the rim is somewhere foreshortened and we're just not seeing that. Because here's the band. I think the reason I knew that is I remember spending days walking around the different shops in San Francisco <laughs> trying to find a hat like this. Uh -huh. Only to have them explain the reason why they're so hard to find is because they were effectively disposable. <laughs> oh my goodness. Because like, you can't find a good one anymore. They're like, <laughs> it's really hard to find a collapsible top hat that's in velvet and nice and original. So. I'm going to sip my coffee, you goof. <laughs> I love it. If you think I'm into hats, it's nothing compared to my husband. He doesn't leave the house without one. Like, it's a whole thing. Like, the kids know where all his hats are. Oh, yeah. I have two top hats, two two fine top hats, like two <laughs> play top hats. I have a bowler. I have several fedoras, many flat caps. He actually has a, a New York haberdasher and a San Francisco <laughs> haberdasher. <laughs> all right. So I'm going to dust my brush with some blue pigment. And I'm going to get a lot of white on here, but I don't want it to be pure white because I'm going to use that as an accent. So I definitely want the phthalo in here, but where it still feels white. So try to think of, um, I would say, uh, you know, like when you're at the Home Depot and there's all the different kinds of white. Yeah. And so I'm going to come across his belly on the edge of my bristles, just the tips, softly dragging, dry brushing, like we did the sky, mm -hmm. across him. Rounding my little strokes like a smile. And where I'm coming to his backside, I'm going to just very, very lightly put paint here. See how light it is? Mm -hmm. And that is because, and I can do that because you can see the edge of the bristles are not completely loaded. So if they get more loaded, they'll put down a heavier paint. So I kind of wait till my paint brush gets a little bit dry before I head to the back. So I can get that nice soft dry brush that I'm looking for. And I'll go ahead and pull as much of my dry brush pigment off as I can because there's layers of this that I need to do. I'll put out a little more white because I'm running low. You see the fluid white, but that mm -hmm. won't work on this. It'd be very, you'd have to, so like if you had craft paint in a soft brush, this would be much harder. Hmm. Proof that I am not taking the caps off my paint correctly. That was just evidence of it. <laughs> evidence. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, um, just real quick, I'm going to get a really soft brush. Um, well, that, this one here I was using is pretty soft. I've got one that doesn't have any black paint on it. If I were to have, like, a soft brush and craft paint and I was going to be trying to do this and I was trying to get a dry brush I wouldn't get my brush wet 
I'd load it very, very lightly in my pigment. And I take the extra step of hitting this on a towel before touching my canvas. Does this help anybody? I hope so. Yeah. You know, so you can see that I'm using a soft paint and a softer brush and I'm still dry brushing. It's a slightly different result and I might have to work a little bit to get it, but I can get it. So don't ever feel like you can't get something. You can get it. All right, I'm going to get my pigment. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, 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 boom. Loaded, offloaded. Get it into my white so it's a little bit tinted. There we are again. We can see it. Okay, so back up to the head because I still got to do that. I'm going to just come across the front where my paint load is the heaviest right now, even though it's a dry brush. And then as I'm coming to the back of his head, right, making sure I'm kind of stroking the shape of the ball that I have here, I'm going to lighten my stroke and not put as much paint on the back of his head. And that kind of creates an implied shadow. Now on his arm here, again, dry brush, dry brush, dry brush. I'm going to do a cute thing here where right at his armpit, make as light of a mark as you can. And kind of leave like that little triangle. That's like his little snow pit. He's got a snowman pit. You see his pit? Mm -hmm. Snowman pit. <laughs> That's how you make those. <laughs> And again, his little animated arms brushing down, leaving a little bit of a snowman pit. Now, my brush is like this. I'm not really going to rinse it or anything. I'm going to come and get a little more white paint, right? But not total. I'm going to mix it into the um, blue paint that I had. See how I'm doing? I had a little bit of blue, but I'm making a shade lighter. Just real quick, I'm going to come here with this dry brush on this forward edge and dry brush my brighter white. And listen, you could make this your last white. It doesn't have to be the full three values. Mm -hmm. right? You can do this right here. Just make sure you're paying attention to the brush strokes of his body and you're leaving him darker at the back side. And, and you're using blue instead of black to create those darker values. Yeah, I'm using blue instead of black. You could use black. Black's yeah. a good value. And then, then he wouldn't be, he w the, then the snowman he, wouldn't be bluish, though. No, he wouldn't. If you were using black and you didn't get a bluish result, it would be because you used black. Yeah. But, I mean, yeah, the, the bluishness makes him look like he's cold. It, it, so now I'm using the hue to tell a story about temperature. Yeah. I'm using value to tell a story about shape. He's darker here. He's lighter here. Therefore, he's round. I'm using hue to say it's cold outside by using purples and blues. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. It is pretty cool. And it's a... Uh... I'm just shading the front of his face. We can kind of see how that's happening now. Now, get some just, 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 just white on your brush. And you're going to come back. And I do this. My brush stroke is light, and I'm taking a lot of paint. This is also, if you're using heavy body, this is often called impasto coming right to the edge with this bright white. See that? Mm-hmm. And I'm letting it come off my brush. Um, a lot of times people only think you use uh, palette knives for this kind of process, but that's not actually true. You can use brushes. I love using my uh, cloud brushes for palette knife techniques. Because they're so stiff. You can kind of see how I'm making him snowier. Mm-hmm. By doing this. Now I'm going to come right into his little. Look at that. Arm has a little bit of shape to it now. I'm going to make sure I've got that everywhere I need to have that. Next value up makes a big difference. I'm going to do the same. Right here. And then I'm going to put in his features and his scarf, and then I'm going to be almost pretty much done. Wow. He's just coming together quickly. Yeah, he does. He's, he's super nice. So see how I'm just taking the 
my brightest color. Yeah. I'm just making sure that his center face has some bright snow highlights in it. So he seems snowing. Let me look at him. See, he's good. He's good. He's so round. While I'm here, I'm going to load up some of my pure white. And I'm going to come under him a bit with my brush along the edge of my hill. And I'm going to make sure that I put a little extra bright white. See this? Mm -hmm. In my snow. Not all the way to the back of the hill because the back of the hill is a little in shadow. As I come back, I'll, I'll end that. I might put some up at the top right here. Just to say that behind the shadow there would be like light. And I'm definitely going to put some over here to the left. Just some. Just to show some highlights on the snow. Makes it f feel more snowy. See you know how that worked? Yeah. That's a really lovely touch that you can do. And it makes a huge difference in the outcome of your painting. Now I'm going to get a small brush. A detail. I'm going to get a number two uh, filbert. But what you're looking for is a teeny tiny brush with a good point. See how big that is? Yeah. That's what you're looking for when I'm talking small brush. Short handle, small brush. You could do it with long handle too. It just depends on where you're painting at. But regardless, I'm going to get my black paint on the tip of my brush. So this is my fluid black paint that's listed in the description. Mm -hmm. You could use just Mars black if that's all you have. And not worry about that. That would be okay. At the top of his head here. And I'm going to just kind of imply a chalk line. So we draw faces together, right? Yeah. So one of the things that we do is we draw a cross line saying this is where the eyes go. And then on a three-quarter face, we draw a down line, right? Yeah. And that's the face in a three-quarter perspective, which he's in. So knowing that when I do portraits, I make my eye on the far side smaller than my eye on the close side, don't I? Mm -hmm. And I know where his nose goes because I have my three-quarter line. Now, I exaggerate this in all my snowmen, this big, small, because in, you know, caricatures, we can do that. This also tells me where my mouth has to be and my nose has to be. So if you're doing the big art quest about face for me, those skills you're learning there, they apply here. So they've named our snowman. In they fact. have? Yeah. What is his name? Mr. Gary Chewy Zero. Mr. Gary Chewy Zero? That's, yeah. So, so, uh, <laughs> Mr. Gary Chewy, quote, you know, quote unquote, Chewy zero. <laughs> that's, um, that's intense. He's, so I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going <laughs> to. On the same line. So I had the three quarter here, right? You have a three quarter line right here, don't you? Mm -hmm. So that's where his buttons go because he's at a slight angle to me. I'm going to give him three little coal buttons. Little cold. They don't have to be, what's nice about little bits of coal is they don't have to be um, round shapes because coal are rocks and rocks aren't in round shapes. So I don't try to have super round anything here mm -hmm. because I would not like that. Now I'm going to do this last snow thing on him and because I'm doing that, I'm not going to put his reflections in yet because I'll probably have to correct for them um, once I splatter my last bit of splatter snow. So I'm going to get an orange. Now, if you don't have cad orange, you can just make orange with red and yellow. I just like this because it's super bright. Right? And I'm going to do the thing where I'm going to darken my orange with a little bit of black. You push that up just a little bit. It's almost disappearing. Uh, it, it's it, just we got to move that thing. Okay. I'll, I'll do right after this. <laughs> okay. So um, I've got this, it's almost brown when you put black into orange, but it just gives me a little bit of a shade. I'm going to come right here. And you can, you can also just paint it straight orange if you don't like mixing colors. There's, yeah. There would be nothing wrong with just going straight orange. Nothing wrong with that decision. I'm just making a little carrot shape, which is wider at the base and gets narrower at the tip. And I might grab just a smidge of black while I'm here and it's drying. And I might come just behind the nose. 
with a little bit. Okay, just to make it seem like it's stuck in his face. Now, while this is having a dry, I will get this uh, number four bright out again. And I'm going to get some pure CAD. And I'm going to come on his headband while I'm here. And just highlight that. Oop, I had a boo-boo. And mm -hmm. that's no problem because I can come back with black and fix it. He's a black hat, so that'll be easy. Yeah, black hat makes oh, it super on. easy. I don't want the whole headband of solid red. I want it dry brushed just like his little snow self. Mm. Yeah, just like his little snow self. Now I'm going to come and make another little scarf so that we know that was the black and the red. We darkened the red with a little black or purple. Also fine because they're the same value, aren't they? The purple and the black are similar darkness. So right here, I'm going to make a little ball, and that ball can show a little bit below his scarf or above it because he's, you know, tying this hand-knit gift. And then I'm going to come down right underneath here, and I'm going to fling out. A little bit of his scarf towards the left. Just improve the flow on my uh, so that's solid. So I'm on the edge of my brush here, and I'm just letting the ends be loose. See, that creates the sort of tapered yeah experience that this has. And I'm going to come here off this side, getting a little bright. So I'm going to add some darkness to it. Darkness, hello darkness, my old friend. Huh. All right, and I wanted to leave like some of his um, like arm showing. I'm gonna take this off just below his armpit because I wanna show the layering of that arm. So there we go, got two little areas coming off. In his freezy pits. In his freezy pits. I'm gonna get a little more red into my black so it's it's dark but it's you know, not too much. And right here, I'm going to make sure that I've got a little bit kind of a shadow happening right here. Can you see that? Oh, yeah. And I'm going to make sure that this scarf where it's tied has a bit of a shadow, especially where it's bunched. And I found that I liked when the ball had a little shadow on its backside and underside a bit. So that when I highlighted it, that's not pure black, right? That is a dark red toned with some black, right? So you take your red over, and you just make a dark color, but it's not pure black because pure black would be too much. I'm even going to come down the center of the scarf. And then when that is all done, right, I'm going to rinse my brush out. And I'm going to come back and I'm going to get some of my pure CAD, which is a very bright, noticeable color. And I'm going to come to the ends of my scarf first and make sure I get some pure CAD on there. And then I'm going to brush back into my shadow, dry brushing over my shadow. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. This works in car making or whatever you're doing if you're just trying to get a better snowman. Brushing this back. Brushing this back. There he is, and I'm going to just brush right here. Just making sure that that feels wrinkled. Just very lightly back here, because this would still be darker than what's in front. And I'm going to come right to the front of the tie. Make sure that I have that highlighted. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Rinsing that out. Now, I like my snow to feel fairly three-dimensional. Um, I'm going to just fix up my hat here, but I guess I could have done that in my repair after the snow. Um, so I like my snow to be fairly three-dimensional and, you know, really be layered from here to the background so it feels like you're in-depth. Mm. 
getting a little of my so to do that all right i want to put some dark highlights in first okay i keep going rinse go rinse yeah, go like, what are we doing okay i'm just loading up what i'm going to do is i want to do this detail now yes in his nose now and then i'm going to snow and then fix him yes so if you're going to add the extra snow like sometimes we will want to do i'm going to make some lines going up in the tie oh, show that it's tied yeah. Make a little knot. Uh huh. I'm gonna come underneath here, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna drag down some lines to show the shadows of his scarf. Isn't that nice. Yeah. I'm gonna come right here and make these little crease lines at the ties. And it is nice to sometimes even come underneath here and see how it just makes it. Yeah. A little more finished. Little shadows are thought out. Now, now his scarf has lots of dimensionality. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's very good. I'm gonna get just a little bit of my pure orange. You get, you can do your the one you mixed. I'm gonna just make sure that I I light his little carrot. Now, you got even more dimension on this one than you do on your study. Really? Oh yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, his, his, his scarf is much more roundy, and so is his nose. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. I'm always glad when it gets stronger. Now, my little two cents is I'm going to put my fluid paint back out again. If your fluid paint, well, I can show you. Sometimes it gets thick as it's older, so you have to be really sure that it's not clumped somewhere. So see how I'm kind of working it through the brush? Yeah, a little bit there. Yeah, You may need to uh, use a test thing, your test paper. We can do a test paper and see what our dispersion looks like. That is a very good habit to be in. Right? So I can come here and be like, okay, good. I have, it's not doing strings. What you want to avoid is sometimes when your paint gets thicker, it makes strings. Mm, yeah. You don't want no strings. Yeah, yeah. The snow doesn't make strings. It's not a silly string. So I'm going to just... Add another little layer of snow. Oh yeah, just happening in front of him, so that he is in the snowflakes or among the snowflakes. Now, what can happen when you're doing that is sometimes white flecks will get on your black spots mm -hmm. and make it where your eye reflection doesn't look right. Oh, I see. So you have to be ready to come back and fix that if you had an eye reflection where you did not want it to be. Gotcha. But this one actually worked out really well. So I'm going to get my small number two. And I'm going to make a small reflection right here. A slightly bigger reflection right there. Oh, yeah. I'm going to definitely add some reflections to the buttons. But interestingly enough, not to the teeth. Hmm. Once he is all done, I can look at him. I can futz with him. I can experiment with him whatever I want to do and then when I'm really really happy I'm gonna and I'll probably do this in um, I think I'm gonna do it in white you could do it in any color that you wanted I just like to think about like how the signature is gonna look in the painting you know you want it there and legible but also so that it's not taking away from the composition that you've worked really hard to get yeah All right. There we go. She's signed. He's signed. Whoever, yeah. he, whoever he is, is signed. And that's how you paint this super easy one hoot frosty snowman on a blustery day with snowflakes. Yeah. You could probably even, if you had like extra time, go in and make like little like detailed snowflakes floating in the skies, an extra level of dimension. Huh. So I'm just saying, you can take this idea and put them in a lot of environments, this background, put it in a lot of environments. You can be painting this snowman through the whole holiday season on everything, now that you know how to make them. Yeah. Be good to yourselves, be good to each other, and I want to see you at the easel really soon. In fact, tomorrow, mm. where we're going to do our big painting of the 12 days, so oh. 16 by 20. But of course, you can do it on any size canvas you like. I want to see you at the easel really soon. Bye, guys. Bye-bye.